Hi, do you have a resume? Yeah, here you go. Ooh, freshman. Hi there, can I see your resume? Yeah, here. You don't seem to have enough relevant experience though. If you have experienced something similar, you're not alone, I have been there. At the same time, I have been writing and rewriting my resume ever since my freshman year in 2013. So... Seven years of iterations. I have come across a lot of the best tips, tricks and learnings. So in today's video, I'm going to share all of those with you to show you all 13 things you could include in your resume, why to include them and how to prioritize them based on what experience you have. Captivate it yet? Let's go. Good morning everyone, my name is Justine and I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. Despite a seven year long resume writing process, I have iterated enough to have a decent resume to put in front of a recruiter. See you again? That's the benefit of being a designer. You can use design to design your resume. Pretty cool, huh? So let's grab a coffee, make sure to watch it to the end for some bonus content and let's dive right in. There are two types of information on your resume, your ID info and relevance info. Your ID info is a must and it precedes the other 13 things. So let's go over that real quick. Your ID info will include your name, first name and last name. It can be the name that you go by or people know you as. It doesn't really have to be your legal name, especially if it's hard to pronounce and could confuse the recruiters. Whichever name that you have that could make the communication easier than just Go for that one. Your name is just a way for the recruiters to know that you are a real human being so that if they end up googling your name, they can find the same person on LinkedIn or on Behance. Number two, your contact info, email and phone number. Obviously, that's for the future employers to contact you to set up phone screens or interviews. You can put your school email or personal email. I prefer school email just because that .edu could give me some credibility that I'm a legitimate student from this school. But at the end of the day, it doesn't actually matter. As long as you check your email, then you'll be fine. Phone number, again, it could even be a Google voice number. As long as when they call you and the number goes through, you can pick up and talk to them. All good. Number three, physical address. It's what you don't need to put and you should not put it. Otherwise, you will get a lot of errors. Like that. I'm speaking from reality in 2021. You have already put down email, you don't need a physical address. You live in your email, right? You are not going to see this to happen. Um, can I help you? Hi, I'm looking for Justine. Oh yeah, I'm Justine. Yeah, so I've got your resume and you seem to have some nice experiences before. So we decided to set up a phone interview with you. Okay, you could have emailed me about it. I might have a feeling that if you do that in 2021, it will be like, what is up with this guy? Hey, come here. This guy put his physical address in it. Number four, portfolio link. Just add this to your resume in case somehow, for some whatever reason, your recruiter forgot about or missed your portfolio link in your application. Then your resume can still direct them to your portfolio. So that's ID info, very basic, nothing fancy. What comes after though is way more important, the relevance info. This will signal the recruiter that you seem to have some relevant experiences and you might be a good fit for the job without even speaking to you. Remember recruiters only spend six seconds on a resume. This is where they spend the six seconds on. So the ultimate goal for your resume here is to convince your recruiter that you have relevant experience within six seconds seconds. And the 13 points that I'm going to cover today are meant to create as much relevance as possible. The catch is any information could be relevant to a job post, but is it very relevant or is kind of relevant? Which means you should rank and present them accordingly. Here's what I think the priority should be. P1 professional job and internships to P13 language. P1, of course, is the most relevant thing and P13 is the least relevant one. If you are a freshman, you probably only have P8 to P12. You should work towards P1, 2, and 3. 
If you are a sophomore, you will have more of these on your resume, so on and so forth. You don't need to include all 13 at any given point. This is more like a guideline for what you might want to include depending on the stage you are at. You know, in the end, you should have a lot of P1, 2 and 3. Emphasize them and you can probably get rid of the P9 to P13 as they are not that useful anymore. Here is what they all mean and why you need them. First one is pretty obvious, P1. Any professional experience will help establish your credibility and add huge points to your resume. And of course, to your internship application as well. If you did a product design internship at Uber and you're applying for another design internship at Lyft, your Uber experience is going to be very, very relevant. It was work experience and it's directly related to what Lyft is doing. It will at the same time signal that you might be interested in this particular industry because you are applying to a very similar company that you just interned, which means you might be an expert in this field. Interview you first. Even if you interned at Facebook the past summer and you're applying to Lyft for the next summer, having a Facebook as a big name on your resume still means a lot to your application. Because if Facebook hired you before, your resume is telling Lyft that you passed the bar of Facebook and your design skills are not bad. You will be a better bet than another candidate that has no prior internship experience before. Next, P2, professional client work. If someone pays you to work on something, that means they acknowledge your design skills. That is still some credibility to show your recruiters. Imagine you did two years of branding work for several clients in high school. Right off the bat, your resume as a freshman has two years of professional work experience that the recruiters will immediately notice versus another candidate that does not have anything. If you are applying to a graphic design or communication design internship, that two year branding experience will certainly be relevant. Your clients might not be as well known as Facebook or Uber, but it still means something on your resume, especially if you don't have any P1 experience. P3, research projects and publications. So these are the next closest things to professional work experience. Except these projects take place in school and you are working for a professor and with some other researchers or maybe even your classmate. Research projects are intended to communicate hours, meaning the end goal will be like a research paper or a project demo at a conference or both. These projects are typically funded by the government or some private funding sources, which means they are important. If they're important, they will carry some weight on your resume as well. For example, if you did a research project on what impact social media has on school grades for college students, and you build some tools to analyze that, publish the research paper, when you apply to a Facebook product design internship, this research project is a very relevant experience to your application, even if you have zero internships before. P4, your education. This is kind of given for everybody. You were in college, you're majoring in graphic design, UX design, traction design, industrial transportation, whatever design that you're interested in. There's one thing you can do to make this section a lot more relevant. List your emphasis. For example, other than just saying you're a transportation major at our center, if you want to intern at a company that makes autonomous vehicles like Waymo, DD, or Tesla, you can put Transportation design, specialization, level four to five autonomous vehicles, infotainment design for shared ride hailing experience. Right away with one more line, this resume becomes a lot more specific and targeted. So if you find your niche and special interest, include those. Even if it's just a broad direction, it's still okay to write that. Personally, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do first when I was in undergrad, but I knew I was interested in Internet of Things, so I put down Internet of Things. As you are iterating your resume over time, on resume V10, 20, 30, 40, 50, you will have a way better sense of what that would be. Again, design thinking. All right, next, P5, personal slash school projects. These are pretty much the same thing to me. The difference might be you will have more time for your school projects, but way less for your personal project. Or if you hate your school projects, which could happen, then your personal projects will be a way better one, a more relevant one to put on your resume. Again, remember, these are the projects that you like and you want to work on them as if they were your full-time job. 
and if those work will align with your internship application. If you have none of the P123, this will be the most relevant thing you can put on your resume. If you did a project, doesn't matter if it's school or personal, on designing a new social mobile app to randomly match college students to get Starbucks coffee and make new friends, that would definitely be relevant when you apply to Facebook, Twitter, or even Starbucks and a bunch more. Next up, P6, awards and recognitions. A few things can happen when you do a school or personal project. You can submit that to a competition and sweep some awards like Red Dot, Spark, or Idea. Or get featured on Yanko Design, Core 77, Design Boom, and other design blocks. Or your project went viral and go to the news and headlines. If any of those happened, you could totally include those in your resume. Because this means other people see value in your work, so they would recognize it, they would feature it, they would tell other people. And then the company that you're applying to could also see the value in your work, especially if your speaker design project won a ton of awards and media coverage, and you're applying to Sonos, Bose, or other companies that make speaker products. That is a relevant experience, even though it's just a personal project. Number seven, hackathon projects. If you have not gone to a hackathon, go check it out. A hackathon is basically marathon for hackers. So hackathon, see that? It's mainly for computer science students to barely sleep, do a ton of coding work in one to two days to create a prototype. Since it's a competition and if you are UX or interaction design major, you can totally join a team to help on the design to make the prototype more usable, more sleek, to better compete with other teams. You will learn how to create design under time pressure, create an MVP design, hand off your design to software engineers. This is P6 because it's a two-day project. It guarantees your design quality, your design work is going to be rough and super not polished. But it shows that you can design under tough constraints. You can work fast, you're motivated, you're willing to spend time on design because you're trading your weekends off. Great qualities to have on your resume. If you win something, even better. For super early startups, your ability to succeed in a hackathon can be very valuable to the team, which means it's gonna help your internship or job application if you're applying to a startup. I'm not telling you to go to a hackathon every weekend. That can seriously kill you. Please don't do that. Once in a while, it's fine. I personally have only gone to two. I wish I'd gone to more. And we won one of them. P8, public speech. If you're presenting at a conference, you can totally put it on your resume. And this could very likely to happen if you're doing a research project, which is P3. See how things are connected there, huh? Presenting a project is not as directly relevant compared to an internship or a side project, but it shows your presentation skills and hints that your work is not too bad. Because if you're invited to give a talk about your work, you must have met some basic quality bar. Then you are sending this signal to your potential recruiters or employers that your work is at least this good, good enough to present at a conference. So plus one point on your resume. Number nine, GPA. I know GPA is not important for designers, but if you have a high one, it could be helpful. It could be even more helpful if you have none of the P1 to P8. Remember how I got my first internship? They required me to put a GPA on my application, and I happen to have a 3.93 GPA. Not perfect, but presentable. I don't think my GPA was what decided my offer, but it might have helped along the way. And that's the whole point. Your GPA basically shows that you are a hard worker, you are badass, and then you're ready to kick some asses. It's not too relevant in terms of experience, but it's relevant because it's sending a positive message regarding your work ethics, your attitude, and what you would do if you really want something. If you want an A, then you will get an A, get a 4.0. I want it, I got it. I want it, I got it. To a hiring manager, it translates to, if you want to make good design, you will make that happen. It shows promise. P10, school clubs and involvement. Yep, if you notice, it's getting less and less relevant. The most relevant thing you can get in P10 is probably being a TA, a teaching assistant. Because that means you understand a subject well enough so they can teach and help others. 
Other than that, it will be your whatever school clubs, IDSA, IXDA, design clubs, marketing clubs, something something, honor society. Those somehow give me a feel of the student body president in high school. But the college ones are better. Again, this is just some sort of initiative you can get involved in. It costs you nothing but time, which freshmen will have a lot. If there's some design work or exercise involved, great. If not, just go hang out and meet with some upperclassmen, and they might be helpful for your future internships. I found my mentor in college, so it could happen. Let's say you want to include your school club or whatever in your resume. And if you want to apply for Facebook product design internships, try to frame it in a more relevant way. Instead of saying design club, say, say design clubs focusing on social media engagement initiatives on online platforms. Again, not going to make a huge difference, just another tip to squeeze as much relevance as possible. P11, skills. Putting PowerPoint on your resume is just nonsense. Nonsense. From day one, I know I would rather put nothing on my resume rather than letting the resume to be like, yo, yo, Jim, come over. Look, this dude, he put PowerPoint as his skills. PowerPoint. PowerPoint. Seriously? Yeah, seriously, don't put PowerPoint. That's really hilarious. If you have to put something, put some better ones. Again, we are looking for relevance here. You are a designer, you can put Photoshop, Illustrator, in Design, After Effects, all those Adobe products. If you don't have any P1 to P10 items. Putting the entire Adobe Creative Cloud is still kind of dumb, because you are a designer, you are expected to know all those tools. But in comparison, it's better than PowerPoint. Whew. P12, interests. This demonstrates that you are a human rather than convincing people that this is a relevant skill or experience. So just letting you know right now, this is probably, likely, pretty much will be ignored by the recruiter or the hiring manager. But you know, sometimes you could catch their eyes. Putting food as your interest, in my opinion, is just as dumb as putting PowerPoint for your skills. Seriously, food as your interest? Who doesn't like food? Hey, anybody don't like food? No. See, they said no. I've never met anybody said, I freaking hate food. I'd rather starve to death. Okay, if you're applying for a kitchenware company, maybe you can put food. Otherwise, it's just so generic that it sounds funny. Don't you think? If you put food, you would rather just rephrase it to make it more relevant. Say, linguine di mer, if you like pasta and you want to design some utensils and plates. That will help because it's relevant. Right, kitchenware, pasta, pasta, love pasta. Fun story, a friend of mine put Chick-fil-A for fun. And for some reason, the hiring manager was a huge fan of Chick-fil-A. So instantly, it became relevant. All right, last one, P13, language. If you speak anything other than English, great. If you have nothing else to put, sure, put it, go ahead. It's not going to be super relevant or important to your internship or job application most of the time. That's why this is P13. All right, so you can see P1, 2, and 3 are the most relevant and important info to put on your resume. Theoretically speaking, if you have super strong P1, 2, 3, you can really easily get an internship without any of the P4 to P13 items. So try to get as many higher priority ones as possible meaning you're better off spending more time on P3 research projects rather than trying to think so hard on P12, what interest to put. Make sense? The baseline is you are a UX designer, you should know, understand the users, which will be the recruiters and the hiring managers. What are they looking for? What are relevant experiences to them? And then you can easily understand why I listed those 13 points and maybe you can think of something else that are more relevant. Whew. If you make it this far, congratulations. You have learned a lot about resumes and you're ready to iterate on the next one. As a thank you bonus content for watching the whole video, I will offer to look over your resume and provide you some feedback if you do the following two things. One, smash the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. And two, leave a comment saying that you have subscribed and you have turned on the bell. 
And then you can send your resume to my email, which you can find on my about page in my channel. Make sure to include your YouTube username in the email so that I know you left a comment and then I will go ahead and review your resume, give you some feedback and give you a proper shout out in the next video. With that said, thank you guys for watching. If you find this video useful and insightful, please destroy that like button for the YouTube algorithm. And if you want to see more videos like this, also consider smash the subscribe button as well. Doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content on the road. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better future. See you on the next video. Cheers!